Hello everyone, Vincent Thiel from HDTV Testier. I'm a TV reviewer and professional calibrator. I hope you've had a good Christmas and Santa brought you the present you wanted. As for me, I received a few pair of socks and I think I have enough novelty socks to last me a lifetime now. But the reason I'm standing here today is to talk to you about the flashing and macro blocking issue that affects LG's 2018 OLED televisions. And I think I want to be extremely clear that there are two separate issues at play here. The first is what I call a near black quantization or near black posterization issue, where when the transition goes from black to just above black to dark gray, the LG OLEDs exhibit a bit more posterization or a coarser gradation than OLED TVs from other brands, maybe Panasonic and especially Sony. So especially at the darker end of the picture, you may see a bit more noise and posterization, especially in highly compressed content. And I think that this problem has been present on LG OLEDs for a long time now probably since the beginning and before I found fame and fortune on YouTube I used to write reviews and there are probably still a few floating about on the internet on my HDTV test website and we have repeatedly pointed out that LG doesn't allocate enough bit depth at the darker end of the picture and so they couldn't actually achieve a smoother gradation and you will probably see a bit more noise and posterization than let's say competing LED LCDs and also OLED TVs from rival brands but that issue has been present for some time now and I think that the 2018 iteration even though it is cleaner than let's say 2015 or 2016 you know it is still present when I display this ramp here you can see that in a side-by-side -side comparison with a Panasonic OLED that I've managed to get into this test room at the same time, there is a smoother transition on the Panasonic, whereas on the LG, you can see that there are more colors that are turning brighter than they should be and then turning darker again. So this is probably down to an insufficient allocation of bit depth down low to actually achieve a smoother gradation and reduce quantization noise. So that is the first issue and I think that it has been present for a long time now on LG OLED televisions. But the second issue has reared its ugly head over the past few months, especially in recent weeks, where users are complaining that, especially in highly compressed content, in the darker scenes, they can see a flickering or a flashing effect. And I want to really coin a term for this issue to promote discussion among the AV community to describe this issue. Now, you know how in the old days when astronomers, they name a planet that they discovered or a new star that they discovered, they usually name it after a woman they admire. And my initial thought was to name this phenomenon as Gal Gadot. But I think when you try to ask someone, is your LG OLED affected by Gal Gadot? I think it may get quite confusing. So I'm going to use a more technically correct but more boring term to describe this issue. And the phrase that I've come up with is near black chrominance overshoot issue. And I'll explain the reason why. So I've altered my own test pattern to try and see under what conditions it occurs. And I'm going to show this test pattern here. So this test pattern consists of four blocks of my HTTP test Twitter handle or Instagram account. I might as well plug it while I'm actually doing this video. So at HTTP test, there are four blocks here. And one block is gray and the other three are colored. And as the blocks move, you can see that the edges of the letters or characters, they glow brighter. It looks to me like a ringing artifact, but it is actually not ringing. It is basically just a temporary brightening when the pixel switches from off state, total black, to a very, very dark color. And interestingly, on the totally gray block, you can see that this issue doesn't occur at all. So I believe that this chrominance overshoot issue only affects colors near black, hence the term chrominance that I've actually adopted to try and describe this problem. And 
Another interesting thing is that you know you can see that as the brightness of the character blocks go up, the ringing actually disappears after a certain point. So it's just above black where the problem occurs. Once you actually go above the threshold in the brightness, then this problem won't be present at all, as you can see from this test pattern which I've ordered myself. And I think that it is this brightness threshold that explains why some users out there see this chrominance overshoot issue so often on their TVs, whereas some other users claim that this problem is not actually present on their TV at all. Because as you know, when OLED TVs are assembled and manufactured and they are sent out all over the world, there's usually a panel variance from one panel to another. And the brightness of each panel may vary from one to the next, especially near black. And therefore, if you have a panel whose near black luminance actually sits above the brightness threshold that is required to trigger this issue, then you may not actually see this problem at all. Whereas if you own a panel whose near black luminance is actually sitting below this brightness threshold, then you may actually see it in a lot of content. And I think that throughout the real world content that I've actually seen on this LG E that I've got in my test room, I think there are a few factors that determine whether you actually see this issue at all. So if your source content is pristine, then the macro blocks and the posterization noise are going to be lower and therefore this issue may not present itself in as obvious a manner on let's say a highly compressed bit staffed content where the macro blocks are bigger, constantly switching here and there with more posterization noise. And it is this posterization noise that can actually go below the brightness threshold, triggering this chrominance overshoot issue and then you see a flash. And the second thing is that the room conditions under which you can actually see this issue is very important. If you don't watch in a pitch black room or very, very dim lighting, then it is very unlikely that you will actually pick up this issue because this issue is only limited to the very, very dark end of the picture. And when there's ambient light present in the room, our pupils constrict and we have more difficulty picking up shadow detail, which may explain why some users swear that their TVs are not affected by this issue at all. And thirdly, also, I think uh, it's to do with your viewing distance from the television. Obviously, if you walk up close and peer very, very closely to the television set, you'll be seeing a more dirty noise or the pixels flashing away. But from a normal viewing distance, it may be unlikely that you will actually see it in real life content. So. Those may explain the variability in user experience in detecting this issue. From my investigation, this affects all 2018 LG OLEDs that I have actually encountered out in the field when I'm actually calibrating for someone. I run this test pattern. They have actually exhibited this issue. So this ranges from the B8 to the C8 to the E8. So all the 2018 OLEDs are affected by this issue, which discounts it from a chipset issue because if you remember the C8, the E8, the G8 and also the W8 they have the more advanced Alpha 9 processor whereas the B8 has the old Alpha 7 processor but the B8 is affected as well. So that is one thing. But when I ran it on 2017 panels, my test pattern, they don't actually exhibit this issue which is quite perplexing. So this issue is only specific to the 2018 LG OLEDs. And I ran it on a few other Sony and Panasonic OLEDs that have calibrated in the field. And again, they don't actually exhibit this chrominance overshoot issue. And I have to be fair and say that even though I've actually run this test pattern on the all the TVs that I've calibrated out in the field, none of the owners have actually seen this issue at all. They don't really know what I'm actually talking about. Now I'm gonna show you a few examples of real life content where I've actually managed to capture this issue on camera. First of all, I want to say that it is extremely difficult to actually capture this issue on camera because it is so dark. There's not enough dynamic range on my camera to actually properly capture this issue. So I've had to resort to some manipulation in post-production, you know, using my editing software to try and boost the exposure to show you the issue in a side-by-side -side comparison with 
uh, Panasonic OLED that I managed to get in for another purpose. And I want to thank some of you guys for sending me the specific titles, the specific season, the specific episode, and the specific timestamps where you saw this issue occurring on your sets so that I can actually check them on this LG E8 that I just happen to have in my test room here. So the first scene is in Gerard's game and I'm going to play it at normal speed and then I'm going to play it again slowed down so that you can actually spot the chrominance overshoot issue happening around here. Bear in mind that the exposure of these video clips have been raised in post because I want to make this issue clearer. In real life, it is visible to me in a pitch black room. So that's Gerard's game. And then the next scene that I will put up is from this episode in The Last Kingdom when the scene fades to black. You can see a flashing occurring on the LG OLED but not on the Panasonic OLED. I'm going to again play the clip slowed down in my editing software so that this issue becomes clearer to you. And the third scene that I'm going to use is from Arrival. Now this is played through Netflix which means that there is more compression going on. And again when the scene fades to black you can see near black chrominance overshoot on the LG OLED but not on the Panasonic OLED. And the last example that I'm going to put up is the scene from Vikings on Amazon Prime Video where you can see some chrominance overshoot on the LG OLED but not on the Panasonic OLED. So those are the four examples that I've managed to capture on camera to show you that this chrominance issue is visible in real-world content on my LG E8 review sample that I actually have here and I have other scenes that I've tested where I can actually see the chrominance overshoot issue as well but I couldn't manage to quite capture it on camera but I'm just going to list them here so in certain scenes from Breaking Bad in certain scenes from The Revenant The Revenant is not on the 4K Blu-ray but it's actually played through Netflix where there's more compression and it's in HD rather than UHD. So LG is now aware of this issue and I hope that the engineers can find a solution to this chrominance overshoot issue sooner rather than later. Now before I wrap up this video, there's a problem that I really want to discuss with you about the future of this channel. and. As you probably know by now, I have been very transparent and honest in my television reviews. And when I review a television, I try to list not only the pros, but also the cons in as honest a manner to try and give you the opportunity to have an overview of the television in a more comprehensive and complete manner. So you won't see me actually doing a television review, not on this YouTube channel, where it is entirely positive without any negatives whatsoever. But my reviewing style has landed me in trouble more than once and the marketing department and the PR department of these manufacturers, they don't really appreciate this sort of honest and transparent reviewing style because, let's be honest here, I mean if you have another publication that puts out a review that is glowing and you have someone like myself who is actually reviewing a television in a thorough manner without any quarters given, without sugar coating, then who are you actually more likely to send a review sample to? A manufacturer or a PR department is more likely to send the review sample to publications or journalists who are more likely to review televisions in a subjective and glowing manner than someone like myself who thoroughly puts a TV through its paces and you know doesn't hide behind subjective words but show you all the graphs and charts and all the objective testing methodology to show you really the pros and cons of a television. But this doesn't really go down well with 
manufacturers. And so I think you know, my ability to actually put out reviews in a timely manner and also to learn about technologies has been impacted by my reviewing style as well. And I'll explain to you why. So take for example, let's say if I wanted to make a video of this issue and I ring up LG's PR manager. Oh, hi, hi Sally. Uh, how are you? Um, okay. Uh, the reason I'm calling you is because some owners of LG's 2018 OLEDs have been seeing this problem on their television sets. Now, can you send me a review sample so that I can actually test this issue? And if there's indeed an issue, I'll publish a video about it. And obviously, it is negative publicity, isn't it? I mean, obviously, they're not going to say yes. So at the other end of the phone line, the PR manager will be going, Okay, Vincent, uh, I really like you, but you can go f yourself. And that's how the conversation would go. And I think, you know, we need to find a solution to this problem. And I think every year, some journalists get invited to, say, South Korea to attend a pre-CS briefing where the manufacturers show these journalists, these pre-selected journalists, their upcoming products for CES and they get information about the new display technologies that are being implemented on these new TVs. Now, I really like learning about new TVs, new products, new display technologies, and I really want to hear what a manufacturer has to say so that I can actually digest them and then present it to you, educate you in as concise and clear a manner as possible. But because of my reviewing style and because of the videos that I put out highlighting problems on television sets, I have been sort of overlooked and neglected in this process so I don't get actually invites to attend these pre-CS briefings. I don't get invited to learn about the technologies implemented on new products and I really don't know what to do. I don't know what the solution is uh, to this problem because I'm not going to compromise my integrity to try and change my reviewing style and I really hope that some of you will have some ideas. A few of you have suggested that I start a Patreon account and then you'll contribute some money but I've looked at some other Patreon accounts of channels with 100,000 subscribers just like myself and the amount of money coming in is probably only about like 100 to 200 US dollars which to me isn't even enough to actually cover the cost of actually buying in a TV set and then selling it off at a loss you know it's not even enough for that so we have to try and find a solution to this problem and I really hope that you guys can give me some suggestions and you know uh, help me out here but if you found this video useful please click the like button and subscribe to the HGTV Test YouTube channel for more videos like this. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.